and I'm showing the progress what I've done this week. Well, haven't done that much, but still there's a progress. I've done about 40% of the filling here. As you can see, I moved almost to the to the edge at the bottom. And this time I decided to do as much as I can do on this half of the skirt. And once I get this part done, I'll move to the second part of the skirt. And then once I, I get all the filling done, I will do the seams and continue the layout and do the filling over there. But so far, as you can see, I haven't finished this part yet. It's a loop hanging. So I just wanted to show you what was done. So this is the, the waistline. And I will fill over here in this stream. I'll probably go over here, return and finish it somewhere around here. If the, we'll see how much I can manage to do today. So I've started the new skin. The leftovers that I had from the Temari is already finished. So I started the new skin. And time to pin. As usual, I pull the template really tight on the cushion so it stays flat. There will be no folds. No hanging areas. It all should be should stay really firm on the cushion because it really matters when do, when I do the filling. So there's no bumps, no lumps. All should be flat. First of all, I secure everything around the area where I'll be working, and I'll add a couple of more pins in the middle so it stays flat too especially on the on the big flowers because as you can see the center is not fixed and it's when I'm working on it it just kind of raises raises up and I'll add a couple of more pins that I'll be using to uh, to keep the filling when it comes to it Sometimes you, you have to make the loop and come back to it later. And place everything under the cushion. Wrap it up. It's time to work. can see that this is the areas that have to be flat. That's where I usually keep extra pins. So oops. I think I have to undo this because I don't like it. It's not fixed to the motif. You can see, barely picked any stitches from the motif. Now it stays solid. Just because I was doing that yesterday, I was a bit tired. And I missed that bit. I'll do. As I say, this metallic thread sometimes. It's hard to catch, so it's just a matter of doing the filling, undo it, do it again. That's the, that's the tamari that I make when I'm fed up with this, some kind of shifting from one project to another.
and I do the Y stitch here between the petals. And of course, Rudy is here, not happy that I don't pay attention to him. So, I'll have to do this part first because I'll move from here to here and then around this shore, Estonia says, from shore to shore. And how was your weekend? Did anyone do any projects this week I was actually working as uh, apart from the filling I was working for the extra motives for the for the next skirt and I'm planning to do once I finish this one and you can uh, you saw it in the previous stream Okay, over here I got quite a big hole that I don't like, so I do the stitch over here at the at the loop of the filling. It's a bit difficult to work. You've got such a big amount of template laying in front of you. Let me get the camera closer. And again, there will be the set of white stitches here. The Y stitch, the zigzag, the combination between of them, so that I can I can fill all the small corners between the motifs. It's a bit like. Tunisian, except that you're doing the filling, not the not the solid piece of work. And again, the big hole, the Y stitch, probably attach the filling over here. And the set of big now since I'm planning to do the circle around here and then come back I'll probably do the the loop over here so when I come back I just finish it up somewhere either at the big leaf or the shamrock so I'm not gonna fill the space here so far I just leave the corner 
because I'll be I'll be back to this piece anyway. And here's why I need the pin. So I can keep the slope a bit off the side. And again a set of white stitches to fill this space. Now I can remove this pin. Maybe just a little pentagon here. But still I got a big loop so uh, the the big hole so I'll make the stitch here and then I can safely join it here so there will be no big gaps between the motifs and the filling. Remember if you're making the small cells in a filling make them small. If you do the big, uh, cell, the big cells make them big but do not mix the big and small because when you remove it off the template those holes will be will look really ugly so it can be regular but just has to be even the cells should be more or less the same size and it will look nice and neat I know people some people work on the start of uh, templates, the what they call them the tablets, but I don't like them first of all because the um, the noise that it makes when you insert the pin and when you you move it around it makes the horrible noise. Again, let me see if I get I got the gap here is too big or not. Well. Seems to be okay. And also it's not really comfortable to move around, especially the big ones. Hi. Hi. Yes, yeah, it. it's not really comfortable to move around. So I prefer to, to use a cushion. Plus the cushion itself, the filling in the cushion keeps the, the pins in place they're not sliding the big just because the the cloth on the cushion itself is slide proof it's not sliding and plus the filling itself the uh, what's the word keep forgetting words after COVID the um, What's the word? Well, anyway, the filling. The cushion filling itself keeps the pins in, in place, so you have to make any the real efforts to stick the pin in and remove it. But the styrofoam, I just re uh, once the styrofoam wears out, Rudy's decided to play with my carpet wool. Just right behind me. I'm afraid to show everything that's happening in my craft room. Got the carpet loom right behind me. Got bags of the carpet wool behind me and behind the loom. It's about 30 kilos of carpet wool. And waiting for my family still waiting for my family to come 
for a for holidays. I'm just waiting for my husband to get his vacation and bring the kids in. Once they're here, they'll help me finish warping. This is because I strained the, the neck warping the loom. So I need definitely need the help and assistant. Someone will stand behind me and feed the feed the warp. Oops. And got the the skein hang on the on the light frame. And hopefully once everything is done I'll have more time to dedicate to craft. Oh, thank you. Right. And again the zigzag. So it'll be no no big holes between the leaves. Because if I if I leave it like this once I remove it from the uh, from the loom uh, from the frame, uh, sorry, from the template, these spaces will open up, there will be a big gap, so I have to fill even the small areas between the leaves on these twigs, they still have to be filled. When you turn turn your work, always make the big loop so it doesn't slide away. It's not an it doesn't unravel. I've got a. Is now he's stealing. No, no, давай, покажи свой носят. Да, he wants the attention. Very jealous, jealous dog. Yes, exactly. Exactly, that's what I have. I'm working on Temari, I'm working on weaving, and I work on lace, on filling, on the motifs, on the carpet loom. I've got three looms, one of them is the carpet loom, the other one is the rigid heddle, and also I have the an inkle loom, so I'm kind of, get, when I'm tired of one project, I switch to another. It's probably the sign of ADHD. Which apparently I have doing all these tests and everything. Because I don't have enough dopamine doing just from one type of work. And that's one of the signs. You either get hyper fixated on something just like it happens when I do the lace you know crochet till you drop they're tired and then switch to something else forget about something like the project I've been work you've been working on for quite a long leave it for a while that's why my this skirt is actually took me I started the motifs back in 2015. I was do was doing the motifs all last year and it took me about six months. The different project I had to order for the threads. Yeah, ordering new new yarn is always a fun part of crafting. 
my husband, my husband is always uh, screaming like there's so much yarn but i can't explain that it's the wrong color and the wrong texture and the wrong size so last week i went to the yarn shop again and i bought this carpet wool let me show you buy them exactly i bought i bought this for one of the projects it's a two ply wool for the carpets to make knots <laughs> exactly uh, i have so much yarn that sometimes the yarn shop actually calls me and asking if i can sell some of my stash because they run out of yarn and there's a customer waiting for that so you can imagine how much yarn I have in the house. Uh, last week I was actually getting all the yarn from the from the garage, and yeah, I will do from here return to this one because it's already twenty one minutes. As I'm streaming, I've got another 15 minutes before my camera overheats. So we'll do that way. And so he, my husband was, was screaming like, you, you have so much yarn, why did you buy some more? And I said, well, I don't have this right shade of blue for the carpet that I'm planning to make. So if anyone interested in uh, carpet weaving on, uh, or and general weaving, you can join me on my other channel, which is called Handicrafts A to Z. It probably should be listed. Oh, that's great. That's great. At least someone is finishing something. But this year, I've got the uh, the top that I've made almost finished in December and it's still at the desk over here just it's hard to get because it's under the wool pile and just to, to finish the um, armholes and the neckline and it's just uh, it requires so much twisting and turning that I decided to leave it for a while Uh, yes, Irish crochet lace is universal. You can do anything with it. I'm actually planning to make the. Um, if you, I don't know if I've, I told you probably on the, on the previous stream. I'm planning to make the uh, chestnut. Uh, we call it bolero. I don't know what's the word in English. It's just like a small jacket up to the uh, to the uh, just under the chest, with the bell-shaped sleeves. I've seen it on Augusta, and when I saw it, like I was watching that, admiring it since two thousand and seven. And when I saw that in Liznaskia in the Skillen Museum. Irish Crochet Lace Museum, you know, I, I was like, I was ready to give up all the money, but I, fortunately, I didn't, I didn't have enough. And my daughter, she was standing there, and I was like Edna, and she was like Saffron, like, be reasonable, you don't need that. And I was like standing there screaming, like, I want to buy this thing. So I decided, Tonya told me that we have to start and make our own versions. Of that and so I decided I'm still gathering printing out all the motifs to get and translating them from French so once I finish the skirt I'll start working on the motifs so I actually started but it's just doing the samples and when, when that will be done I'll make the the crochet along So we can all can do that that stuff. Antonia will be working on the 
skirt that she liked. Again, she was she saw that in the in the skillen. So we both left absolutely disappointed that we can't can't buy that stuff. Even thought it was on sale, but the price was outrageous. Something like uh, one and a half thousand pounds. So you can imagine it is quite expensive. And I'm sorry, chat is running away so fast. The even spacing moment is important too. Yes. Yes, exactly. The the, the lay layout itself is very important. So you, you don't get like one side of the is overloaded with the motifs, the other one is empty with the filling. Because actually the motifs will be too heavy and it will be uh, overweighting. So you can actually have this little part of the of your garment laying flat and part of them sticking out and hanging down. So yeah, laying out the motifs is really important so you don't be, get big spaces unless you are actually planning this as like one big motif and then the filling around it, but not like something like a bunch of motifs, motifs, and then a huge chunk of the filling, unless it's the uh, uh, Rosalie squares, but they're ki ki kind of... Uh, We'll be, we'll be talking about that when I start working on it. We'll talk about that. But generally, yes, if you're working on the on a set where the motifs are distributed evenly around the the, 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 the cloth itself, you have to make it more even. Right. So I'm almost done. I'll just just finish this part and I'll finish it somewhere around here. And we've got another five minutes before I can fry an egg on my telephone. And again, over here, I'll do the sets of the white stitches and zigzags. I'm doing the zigzags here because if I do the white stitches, it will be like a twig, so it will be just a thick line and the, the stitches sticking out. So in these small areas, the zigzag is the best thing to do. My art area is always a mess. Anything <laughs> yet? Yeah. So when I finish, just before I finish the stream, I will show what's happening right behind me. It's not, not something to be proud of, but still, it's the truth of life. I did show some of that mess on the Handicrafts A to Z channel. You can find it. It should be in the recommended area. I don't know if the mobile version shows that. But then I, when I was tuning all the channels, I did set it as a, in the recommended area. So we can have a look at that. There's also one of either one of the streams or announcements. The mess. Actually cleaned up after that video, but still. Since I brought more stuff from the garage, it's again it's a complete complete mess. Yeah, and, and, and when I went to the husband's garage, and just as I was about to close the garage, the the sliding door broke down so my husband came here yesterday fixed the door helped me move more stuff from the garage and it's a completely complete disaster so i've got boxes with the with empty maris to make i've got boxes with finished projects boxes with weaving boxes with yarn just the pile of yarn laying on the floor this is where Rudy tried to steal the skating. The, the, it's not the skating, is that hunk? Just the one that I showed you. 
so I just hope the camera lasts please last five more minutes until I finish this part yeah five more minutes Rudy isn't happy here. I did a bit of grooming on, he, on him today, but half, half of his body is done. I've done his left paws, so he's got nice cat, cat foot on one side, and he's still got the Grinch feet on the other, but at least he's more or less trimmed. He's absolutely terrified of the grooming. I don't know why. Well, actually, I do suspect why, because... Uh, I absolutely by coincidence chosen the groomer where he was actually brought from uh, brought to straight from the airport and he had the um, enteritis uh, the viral enteritis and was all covered with poop and everything and they showed me the box that it, he was brought in and he remembered that that, that he was in pain and he, they, they brought him to the Yeah, ecru is a nice color. I do have lots of yarn for the ecru. And okay, so I finished this part. Yeah, right. So tomorrow I'll probably start from here and do the other part of as well. But that will be for the next streaming. Yeah, uh -huh. the the T nine makes funny funny uh, changes replacements. So here's my craft room, with the books, magazines, another set of books. This is the, the styrofoam for the Temaria. This is the motifs for the another skirt that will be done after I finish this one. This is the the yarn, this one is size 20. Um, now this one is uh, size 20, this one is size 15 for the skirt. Uh, the weaving part, finished temari, carpet wool, and more carpet wool. The loom, haven't finished it yet. It's kind of lost a bit of tension, but never mind. I still can, can correct it with levering. I've got... And Rudy. And I've got this one. I bought it for the Christmas decorations and cabochon, the beading be 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 embroidery. I've got some cabochons somewhere. Somewhere around here. Oh, here they are. I use this felted wool to, to glue the, the, the cabochons. Of course, he is the star of the screen. And and then I do the beading around it. That's that's the top. I haven't finished. This is, as I said, lots of pins and lots of twisting and turning around my flowers. Another set of flowers. This is beads, printouts, transform transformer, and lots of other stuff. This so here's my inkle loom. I started warping it about three months ago and left it. Got the Maris to make. Yeah, the room is too small. And it's too small. And I work over there in the living room. Got the fruit dryer stuff. And there's a rigid header loom. And more yarn. 
and yarn is everywhere. So now, now, now you know <laughs> what I said. <laughs> this is the mess. I still have to fi figure out. I still have to get the stuff sorted into the wardrobe. I probably my husband will make some more shelves here uh, because I've got some uh, we've got some wood left. So you'll do me another two two shelves here so I can load everything inside and hopefully in two months time all these styrofoam balls will go into projects because as Christmas is just around the corner and uh, I'm working on that most of the time this is what I've done in a two weeks time this is the this is how I make money most of the time so yeah, I'm working on this to get, hopefully get the land a little bit bigger than this one. Probably we have the, um, our, our land is 20 meters by 25 meters. And I'm looking for something like uh, 25 by 40 so I can build, build a bigger room, bigger craft room and the, uh, the greenhouse for my flowers. I don't know if you can see that, but over there, there's my green greenhouse with flowers. Yes. <laughs> yes, we're all kind of jumping from one, one project to another. So, yes, I, I, I need a bigger one. This one is about uh, 11 square meters, and I need something like 40. And even then, there will be not enough space to, to fit all the yarn because I got, I got still got more yarn back in in the city. And in total, I have about three hundred kilos of yarn. I've got about uh, hundred kilos of beads. I've got ten kilos of cabochons. I don't know lots of lots of magazines, and not enough time to finish everything. Is my husband's always asking, is screaming, "Why are you doing this? Why are you buying that? Finish this and then buy more." So anyway, uh, that was it for today. Thanks for joining me tonight. Yes, and for warping the, the looms, actually, well, it's for the carpet loom is okay. It just stands here. I get somebody standing behind and just passing me thread back and forth. That's how I strain the strain the muscle because I have to pull the yarn, uh, pull the, uh, the warp over and bring it down, pull it back again, and so on. So that's how I strain the neck. But with the rigid head loom, and I still plan to make the um, flying eight loom, something like eight shaft loom. And it definitely needs bigger space, something like 10 meters to warp. <laughs> so, well, you are my guest tonight, guest tonight and there's got more, more yarn here. And I can't even open the wardrobe because I got the handle bar here. And the Christmas decorations fell out. So this is one of my favorite yarns. Anna, this is what I got the, the, in the, on the bobbins, oh, on the cone itself. It's the same yarn, but the different colors and it's in skeins. So I bought it, also bought it for Irish crochet lace projects and hopefully I will have enough time to make everything. Well, and this is the, the wool, wool and bamboo for the, stalls that I'm weaving, then they're here in the box. Exactly. But nobody would buy that. That's what I make it for myself. So I can wear it and be unique. And maybe one day somebody will be inspired and get another skirt from me for that price. Well, that's it. The camera is actually burning my fingers already uh, thanks for joining me tonight and have a good night bye